Hey my friends, welcome back to a new video today. I have a special message for you. It's starting today. And I want to remind you, this is your lucky day. This is your lucky day, my friend. Expect the rise of luck in areas which are the most needed for you. Something new will enter your life and deep inside you know that you are elevating your energy and rising in this higher form of love, whatever it is for you, whatever is for you a demonstration of love. And I don't want to say demonstration of love you do for others right now. I want to say you do for yourself. You know, when you wake up earlier and when you wake up earlier just because you care for yourself so much that you do the things that matters to you. Like you do that yoga, you do a workout, you go for a walk, you do something that matters because you know that if you would sleep on you would not have time for that. So that's how you create luck in your life. It starts today and it is starting today for you because you've decided that you are the one that will save you. You are the one that will get you to the next level. You are the one that will change your life forever. And because you're deciding that every single day you're creating luck in your life. So luck is not something that just happens to us and you know that we all know that but still often we find ourselves waiting and hoping and wishing while all that is truly in our power is to get ourselves back together and with this i want to say you know when we find a moment in a day where we hit that pause button and we bring all of our attention back into our bodies, back into this moment. We cut the distractions. We stop doing everything else and we focus on this moment within our bodies and we recognize what happens. It's like someone, someone would pause everything and all that truly comes alive is what's happening within ourselves. But soon we notice, you know, even mind is like a sky. It's filled with thoughts and beliefs and ideas. And if we observe it long enough, what happens is like wind would blow out the clouds and we experience a clear sky. That's how mind works. If we stay present long enough in a certain form of meditation or whatever you love to practice that calms your mind, calms your brain and your nervous system, your body, what happens, you become more clear, more pure. You experience this moment of clarity where the sky is clear, right? And you feel at peace with yourself. You feel, you feel calm. And that's where you experience this magic of life. You experience purity. You experience who you are on that pure level. You recognize, well, I am that I am, right? <laughs> that's who you are. And if, let's say you, every single day, tap into this part of you, you start to know this part of you much, much better. If you start to live your life from this purity, and I know it's hard because sometimes, you know, when we get to places where, which are really, you know, loud and poisoned by so much of different stories, beliefs, ideas, suggestions, needs, and so on, we may easily get loose on this, right? we easily get drained out because we start kind of interacting with what surrounds us. So a great bliss can happen once we learn to stay grounded in this purity. Once we stay grounded in this pure mind, that's what uh, Tibetan monks have mastered. You know, great masters from ages have become really good at maintaining that inner purity doesn't matter where you go you can maintain it but what's what happens if you do that you also start projecting it so it's not like um, you're just not getting poisoned by your environment you actually start purifying it with your energy have you noticed that when you're really calm 
when people come and meet you, they calm down. They also start to feel more calm. And if they would talk with someone else about you, they would say, oh, that person has a really calm energy, really calm aura, like beautiful aura. It's nice to be around them. Even if they don't know why, they just feel this nice energy. And that's what happens once we start, you know, once we start loving ourselves to such a degree that we don't allow ourselves to be poisoned by what surrounds us. We actually walk in this purity. We protect it with great boundaries and awareness. Like, I will not allow enter anything into my purity if I don't want to. And if you're wondering how to do that, well, stop interacting with things that um, may be poisoning you. Stop judging things. Stop gossiping about things. Stop complaining about things. And you will notice that it's a choice. Sure, it's an automatic behavior for many of us, but it's a choice. Each behavior is firstly a choice before it becomes a habit. But even habit is a choice. Just that it's more automatic ones, one. And everything becomes a choice once we become more aware, more conscious in this area. So I'm reminding you, it's starting today to choose more wisely. You have to actually wake up and say, today, I am wise. Today, I am intelligent. Today, I am protecting my purity. Today, I will be me. I will honor myself. Today, I'm walking in prosperity because life is prosperous. Today, I am healthy. Today, I am strong. Today, I appreciate my weaknesses. I know I, I have many weaknesses. It's not my job to pretend to be strong when I'm weak. It's my job to acknowledge my weaknesses and to love them because they are actually bringing me clarity around what can I do to improve certain areas of my life that have space for improvement. Today I'm walking in truth, in authenticity. This is who I am today and from today on every single day. This is my lucky day, right? Every single day is my lucky day. Every single day I expect the rise of luck in areas which are the most needed. Every single day something new will enter my life. Every single day I am elevating my energy and rising in love. Every single day I project my purity. But it starts today. It starts right here and it starts right now my friend if this resonates already with you hit the like button let's bring this message to more people and your likes are helping with that so my friend how would it feel if you would have more control over it how would it feel if every single day you would actually take time and to nurture yourself so later in day you can actually remind yourself of what are you nurturing. It's not your body. It's not uh, the beauty of uh, yourself. It's actually that purity that you're nurturing. When you're working out, you're not just working out because you take care of your body. You work out because you also tap into this strong part of yourself. And it makes you feel more resilient. It makes you feel alive. So you tap into life, right? That's why you're working out. Sure, your body experience um, a great uh, vitality because of that. But maybe a lot of that vitality also comes because you've tapped into life. You know, when you go for a run or whatever you love to do, after that you feel more alive. Because you've started moving your body. And movement is what? Movement is a dance to life, isn't it? When we become more active, we also start to feel 
more energized, more vital, blood flow increases. And if our breathing follows that blood flow, if we're conscious of our breath, we'll not feel anxious, we'll feel grounded, we'll feel alert, we'll feel present, we will feel grounded. That's how we create luck. We become present in this wonderful complexity of life. That's strength, isn't it? Strength is not something you're faking. Like you feel weak and you set a mindset of a warrior. It doesn't work like that. Strength comes from being in yourself, embodying yourself, being one with your body, one with your mind, one with your soul, and feeling all of yourself. And often it happens when we combine all of that, right? When, for example, you're working out and you're conscious of your breathing, you breathe in and you breathe out. And with your mind, you're following the movement. What happens, you unify this three forces, body, mind, and breathing, and you become really, really present. That's how you create luck, my friend. What happens, your energy becomes centered and stable. During this full moon, we've been talking a lot about stabling uh, your energy, making it more stable, stronger, to create a strong pillar, a foundation on which you're building your life. And often I see so many people that are complaining about their lives. And because I know what to do, because I've been through these phases, I know that complaining never solves a problem. It just drains us out. It just robs us from life. And each thought is an investment. Each complaint is an investment. But those are weak investments. Those are the ones that we invest and get nothing in return, right? So we just feel more drained and drained and drained. But because complaining is a habit, we do it automatically. We do it naturally. And we are, if we are surrounded with people who are doing the same thing, we think it's normal. Isn't that so? And if we think it's normal, we are keep doing it because we think that's just who we are. But then you change a circle of friends or, or you just stop hanging around those people and you recognize, well, it just feels much better if I'm not complaining. And what happens to so many people, and often I'm laughing when people are talking, uh, when people are explaining this phenomenon, people say, you know, when I became more aware that actually most of the time when I'm talking, I'm actually complaining. When I've stopped complaining, I had nothing to say. So most of the time it happens that I don't know what to talk about with my partner because most of the time we're just complaining. Have you experienced that? So many times people say that. And that's when, when I truly start laughing because this is the time where we ask ourselves, well, how well do we know how to access deeper depths of conversation, right? If we're so good at walking on the surface of what um, looks like uh, wrong to us, now let's actually dive deeper and let's become a little bit more vulnerable and let's talk about deeper stuff. Let's talk about how I feel. Let's talk about maybe creative ideas that you had for a long time and you never thought about them. Let's talk about how you feel about someone else. Let's talk about um, what you feel inspired to do. Let's talk about your hurts. Let's talk about your fears. You know, it's not complainment when we do it with an intention of resolution. It's not complainment when we do it with an intention of seeing deeper clarity around the situation. Complainment is when we do something to uplift ourselves, uh, when we talk negatively about something to uplift ourselves. That's, that's not a good uh, way to resolve something. That's how we create karma, isn't it? We push someone down so we would rise up. But soon we know that someone else will push us down so that person can rise up. That's an 
old way of living. A new way of living is when you lift others up, even though you are not rising. You lift others up even though you're not rising by being honest with themselves, by being truthful and open and vulnerable with them. And you recognize when you are vulnerable, when you are open, when you are honest, you start rising, right? It's like watering a flower. You're not saying to a flower, hey, you have to grow, you have to be strong, you have to be resilient. It's just a natural thing for a flower. If, you know, if you put it outside and there will be some stormy weather, any plant will soon get used to it and will become resilient. Not because it's saying some words to itself. It it just get, get used to to everything that surrounds it. And that's how adaptable we all are. That's the observation of nature. We are adaptable to everything. What's the problem is that we are, you know, we, we start judging everything because we think other things are the problem. If you want to create luck in your life, you have to recognize you are the problem and you are the solution. You're the problem and you're the solution. And when you become so honest with yourself, when something that we describe bad happens to us, we ask ourselves, okay, what are those bad parts of myself that I keep repeating so I can resolve this? If I'm feeling down and lack of energy, lack of motivation, well, what's the bad habit that supports that? What's the bad belief system that supports that? I'm not good at working out, I'm not good at being active, just because for such a long time I was not building any momentum in that. And that is really true. You know, around three years ago I've started practicing this um, cold water therapy. You know, when you go into ice cold water and it was so painful and so hard and often if I was sharing it with someone, people said, like, I don't want to punish myself like that. But the truth is, you know, when when I go into this cold water, what happens, I get exposed to my pain. I get exposed to this unpleasant part of me that is still part of my life, of my daily experiences. Someone may trigger me and I will experience a sense of anger that feels painful. The same as this cold water feels painful. But you know, when you get used to this pain, you're not a victim of it anymore. You recognize, okay, is there a part, is actually there, is there a space to love this part of myself as well? So what happened after two years, this year I've started noticing when I go now into cold water, now I start to love this sensation and it's still heavy sometimes, but I, I close my eyes and I get deep into my body and I just love this unpleasant sensation until it becomes pleasant one, until it becomes like even this is a part of myself. And isn't that a, a, a way how to love all of ourselves? It's not just about loving the light, it's about uniting different aspects, even to enlighten the darkness, even to the become a friend to this darker part of us, to the shadow part of us that we all have. So the shadow part of us is not something we avoid, it's something we integrate. We know it's part of us, we know it's unpleasant. But it's like, you know, sometimes when we were kids, maybe we did something our parents didn't want us to do, and they punished us for that. Sometimes they had their own reasons, sometimes it was because They've been hurt in the past. And now we think that we should, you know, avoid those hurts and we should push our pain away while actually we should acknowledge it so we stop projecting it onto others. That's what I've learned during this uh, ice cold therapies. So it's something I love to suggest to people because it's hard, but it's really controlled way to become a an even better friend to yourself when it's hard 
because I know it's easy to be positive when everything is going good. But when things are not going well, that's where we actually need to learn to embody wholeness within us, to have practices that allow us to feel all of ourselves and not being a victim of negative experiences. So we need to say to ourselves, it's starting today that I am becoming this version of myself I always wanted to be. It starts today that I'm saving myself from my own problems. It starts today that I'm waking up to a lucky day. It starts right now that I'm starting a lucky day. It starts right now that I'm elevating myself, rising deeper into love. And love is acceptance, isn't it? So ask yourself, if you truly want to be a more loving person, how much you are really accepting things that are happening. Sure, to certain things we have to be harsh, right? When we see wars, for example, that are happening, I don't think the only solution is love. I think sometimes something harsh needs to happen. But if it happens from the intention of love and compassion, then I think we are rising it to a higher and more beneficial level. If it's done out of hate, we're just making more wars. And sometimes to ourselves, we also have to be harsh, like I mentioned, going into a cold water or doing a hard workout sometimes. We have to push the boundaries of what, if, what we think that is possible for us. And it's important to push these boundaries and to find certain, you know, spots of limits, how much is enough to not be addicted to this constant pushing. Again, finding the moderation. But it is a way to create a lucky life. Because, you know, once I've started doing more of that, I've started noticing, well, even the things I'm the most afraid, I will accept. If I, you know, if I'm afraid of losing what I've built, I will accept this possibility that it may happen. Because even if it will happen, I think it will just open a new opportunity for something else. And if that's true, if that's correct, I will allow it to happen. If it needs to happen, I will allow it. I will observe it and I will see what it is opening up for me. And I've started dealing with most of my fears like that. And you know what started happening? I've just started ex experiencing more of these incredible manifestations. Not because I wanted them, but because I actually faced with my fears. I faced with my darkness. And I still have it within, but I'm noticing that I'm just becoming a greater friend to it. So I wanted to make this video. I had no idea we'll get into this um, flow, but I think it's important to recognize. We had a strong full moon and it opened up a new chapter as every full moon opens up a new chapter. I think it's time, my friend, to accept yourself, to accept your flaws, to accept your fears and to decide it starts today. It's starting today. I am starting today. And this is my lucky day. So accept, expect, my friend, the rise of luck in areas which are the most needed. My friend, I hope you've enjoyed in this one. I hope you've enjoyed in today's artwork. We are running a super fresh sale, 20 off to all of my art. You can find the link in the description of this video. So go there, check it out. And till next time, one love.